Hello, and thanks everyone uh, for joining us today. I am really excited to dive into, uh, I think what we'll all agree is a really timely uh, and certainly trending topic, and that's the use of artificial intelligence in recruitment and here today specifically in hospitality recruiting. Uh, I am your host and speaker, uh, Adam Robinson. I'm the founder and CEO here at Hierology. And uh, everything I'm gonna talk with you about today is, is based on what we're hearing and seeing in the market, both within our hotel customers uh, and from, from folks uh, operating uh, in the market today. So this, this is all practical, it's not theoretical. Uh, and my great hope for you is that you come away from this webinar armed with information that can help you learn more about the topic and start to take some action on what I will uh, assert is the biggest change and opportunity to the profession of recruiting and this in any industry, uh, certainly in the last uh, 25 years since uh, we started using that thing called the internet. So let's dive right in. I wanted to start out with a little bit of an overview of where the hospitality space is currently as it relates to hiring and retention, as well as current challenges and perceptions of AI among job seekers. Today, as you know, uh, you know we have uh, what is still a, uh, a crisis of labor supply, lack thereof specifically in the hotel and hospitality industry. This industry, of course, uh, took the brunt of the job losses in COVID lockdowns and has also for the past two and a half years been the category with the most hiring month over month uh, since the COVID uh, lockdowns uh, ended. And so uh, it has never been harder to fill open roles in our industry than it is right now. Yet at the same time, your business success depends entirely on you being able to find a way to do that. Uh, and there are some ways uh, that we're doing that now. Uh, I mean, today, 83% of hotels report staffing shortages. Uh, that's according to our friends and partners uh, at the uh, American uh, Hotel and Lodging Association. Uh, and today, we have 100,000 hotel jobs currently open uh, across the United States. And employment, despite the ramp in hiring, employment today in the industry uh, actually trails the uh, pre-COVID 2019 peak. And so uh, as much progress as we made getting back to some level of uh, staffing rationalization we're still short six figures uh and um and and we've been it's it's just hard out there right now um but these challenges continue to persist but most hotels are uh still relying on what i would call out outdated hiring processes or, or processes that uh that worked for yesterday and so overall your entire process Generally, in the hotel industry, I describe our process as too slow. Um, it's it's too slow to respond. Um, people expect immediate uh, immediate feedback, immediate um, immediate interviews, imme you know, immediate decisions. Uh, and when you don't provide that, it leads to folks ghosting interviews or first days, or, or people just not showing up on the first day. And so, in general, our processes around recruiting in this industry are too manual. And so. They're open um, to human error, frankly, and and because we're short staffed, we're we're just not seeing the results that we want to see. Uh, we may have job descriptions that are outdated, and we just don't have time uh, to to update those. Uh, we may be making decisions, uh, you know, based on processes that are rushed, or on the flip side, that take too long. So overall, hiring processes are are pretty slow right now relative to what I think it takes to be successful in this job market. They're a little bit clunky from the candidate's perspective. Um, you know, and in my view, you know, that leads to them being ineffective and in some cases biased. And most job seekers agree and admit that they are feeling the effects of these outdated processes. So in our annual survey of hospitality job seekers, we found that of those who admitted to ghosting in interviews, most said that they did so because the hiring process was simply taking too long. And the next to most common reason was that be, it was because of a lack of transparency from the employer as to where they were in the decision-making process. So not only are you already dealing with the shortage of workers, but this manual outdated and inefficient hiring process that, that most hotel operators are running today make it really hard for us to capture the job seekers that are available on the market and that we need uh, uh, to staff our hotel. And additionally, most consumers agree that AI, uh, 
where are we here? Uh, do agree that AI does have the potential um, to help out with certain parts of the bias, uh, you know, issue in the hiring process. So in addition to going too slow, another thing we talk a lot about uh, in our HR practitioner groups is that um, that that bias is an issue. Uh, in, you know, often we have DEI policies, but it's hard uh, to, to really drive effective change leveraging those. Uh, and in a survey conducted by Pew Research, the vast majority of job seekers think that racial and ethnic biases are a problem in hiring and that more than half believe that AI can help level that playing field. And so what is emerging right now is you've really got uh, two schools of thought, uh, one more on the regulatory side and one more on the practitioner side. You, you, you know, there's a, there's a regulatory uh, body out there, and here I'm referring to you know, federal, state, and municipal level uh, labor regulations that are trending toward a world that says under no circumstances can technology be used to make hiring decisions. And then on the other hand, on the practitioner standpoint, what we're finding is there are vast opportunities for technology to help level the playing field and eliminate bias in the hiring process. And those two things uh, are starting to converge. And in the middle, over the next couple of years, we're going to, I think, see some resolution on that issue. But uh, regardless of where you are on the spectrum in, in terms of considering where you stand on, uh, on, on which side there of that issue, I, I can tell you that AI can, will, uh, and, and should play a role in your organization to make a hiring process consistent, effective, and fair. So now that we see where the potential for artificial intelligence and recruiting lies in, in recruitment, let's quickly get some definitions out of the way. At a high level, uh, when, when we say AI, what, what we're referring to is technology that's capable of performing tasks that typically or traditionally have required human intelligence, including things like problem solving, learning from experience, understanding natural language, recognizing patterns, and making informed decisions. The ultimate goal uh, of AI is to enable uh, machines to mimic cognitive functions and execute complex tasks uh, autonomously. And AI is typically broken down into four types as it relates to capabilities. We have reactive AI, we have limited memory AI, we have what's called theory of mind AI, and then we have self-aware AI. And all types of artificial intelligence is, uh, you know, that's in use today falls under the first two categories, reactive and limited. Reactive AI can perform specific tasks based on presently available data. Reactive AI doesn't have any memory, so it can't use previous experiences to perform or inform actions. One really uh, good example of reactive AI in your everyday life is uh, recommendation engines, like you might see on Netflix or Spotify. Uh, and you all know what happens when your kid gets a hold of your phone uh, and a six-year-old uh, wrecks your recommendation engine on Spotify uh, by listening to nursery rhymes uh, for hours at a time. Uh, I'm living through that right now. Limited memory AI can perform specific tasks, much like reactive AI, but it can also temporarily recall past experiences and monitor situations over time to achieve a desired outcome. So examples of limited memory AI include the granddaddy of them all, uh, generative AI platforms like ChatGPT, that is a limited memory artificial intelligence platform, as well as natural language model assistance that we have used for years, like Siri or Alexa. So we know uh, AI, it's been around forever. Um, reactive AI lives in our everyday life and limited memory AI has lived uh, through the form of virtual uh, assistance, voice-enabled assistance. But for the first time, this limited memory AI tooling is becoming available for professionals to help them do their job better. And so as it relates to use in an enterprise setting, both reactive and limited memory AI can be broken down into what we'll refer to as public and private AI models. There are important differences between those. Uh, the differences are around, number one, the type of data that they're leveraging, two, 
the amount of customization that's available, and three, the privacy of the data that's input into the system. So I wanna go through all of these because this is what your general counsel is gonna be talking to you about for the next million years. Um, first, public AI. Public AI models are trained on data that's publicly available. So chat GPT is inventoried, you know, the entirety of the world's knowledge produced and available publicly on the internet uh, up to and including, I think most recently, uh, September uh, of 2021. Um, so it's publicly available data, it gets ingested, it, the model uses that data um, to answer your next question or perform the next task. Uh, you can't really customize these models that are based on public AI because you don't have any ability to control the algorithm. If you're using a public AI framework, you're gonna use it uh, e exactly as it's described. And so I don't mean things like, you know, make, make this answer you know uh more or less formal i'm talking about uh you know training it on very specific areas of data that you want to include or exclude so it's going to use its entire model you can't really do much to limit the the information that it leverages to give you the answer or perform the task and from a data privacy standpoint everything you put into a public model is exposed to security risk um uh, data protection for your data is dependent on use cases. So, uh, you know, uh, in the in a worst case scenario, an employee in your organization can upload your entire uh, book of of uh, current financial statements or operating metrics uh, into a public AI model, uh, and there's uh, to get an answer or to do some work. And if and if it's a fully public model, you've just given that data to the public model, and they can use it and ingest it and do certain things with it. Now. I believe the public model operators like OpenAI and 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 and, uh, and Llama, which is Facebook's model, and others, um, you know, barred from Google, uh, you know, ha have guardrails in place to make sure sensitive uh, private data doesn't get ingested into the model. But you know, there's no guarantees there, so you have to be really careful. Uh, public AI models are good for leveraging um, tasks uh, that don't require private data to get the job done. Uh, and so, you know, uh, you know, that's maybe, you know, rule number one in using systems like chat GPT, you know, don't upload sensitive information to it. Um, private AI, on the other hand, uh, is, is really the opposite of all of those things. And is the like, that's the cutting edge, the, the frontier we're heading into is leveraging AI uh, models uh, and large language models using your private information, your company information in a way that's beneficial to the operations of your business. So private AI is trained on your data. So you can implement artificial intelligence models in your business, leverage your data to do your work differently. Um, and, and the algorithm can be uh, completely customized to meet your needs. So uh, Microsoft, for example, through their Azure platform, uh, as recently as this morning, because my uh, engineering team is all over the place talking about it right now, rolling out tools that help you leverage private data uh, systems and process stored on your Azure account or servers or database cluster to, um, to do work um, is pretty exciting stuff. And in a private AI model, of course, your data is private and secure. You control the flow in and out and who has access to those things. So, you know, just a, a quick primer on uh, public versus private AI. Now, the possibilities of AI and hospitality recruitment are really spectacular. I think it's going to completely change uh, our profession uh, um, as HR practitioners and leaders of people. And, and so we know the hiring process in, in this industry is ripe for innovation. I, you know, it, it took you through some, some reasons why we're, we're not getting the results we want, generally because of antiquated technology or process, but it's ripe for innovation. And that, uh, you know, most consumers, what I mean consumers, I mean job seekers, are open to the use of AI. Right, it it is uh, so pervasive now. So, where can it play a role in your processes? You I mean you probably have an idea of where it can fit in at a high level, but I want to spend the the rest of our time today digging into some really specific examples to paint a picture of where we're headed uh, in terms of AI as it relates to recruiting. So, first, AI has the potential to completely change uh, your level of productivity uh, as it relates to job advertising. So, currently, the typical process for writing. Uh, sponsored job ads is very manual and often overlooked uh, due to the fact that we just don't have time to, to take our job descriptions 
modify the language uh, to be more like sales and marketing copy and, and you know, take our, our, uh, our budget dollars and get a really good return on that. We often just cut and paste a job description into an ad and, you know, press the button. Um, and so chances are your current process is that. You take an old job, you change the title, you tweak a few requirements, and then you manually post it uh, to your desired, you know, sponsored job channel. And it's likely that these descriptions aren't doing you any favors when it comes to catching the eye of top job seekers. And more often than not, the volume and quality of applicants you're getting from these ads is, is far less than it otherwise could be. So AI tools can eliminate the manual aspect of, uh, you know, making this say, your job descriptions market ready and can dramatically improve the quality of the advertisements themselves. So generative AI tools like ChatGPT can analyze vast amounts of publicly available data, as we've discussed, um, but like the keywords and the phrases used in successful job postings. Job postings are public. They've all been ingested. Uh, it knows what works and what doesn't. Uh, and so if you want to generate more compelling and effective advertisements, instantly you can take uh, a tool like uh, Hireology's job description creator, which leverages ChatGPT, and say, hey, you know, make make this job description into a in an ad format no longer than 800 words that's SEO friendly. Um, not only does this save you a, a bunch of time, but it will also increase the chance that you attract more qualified and relevant applicants. And that's all available to you now. You can come to uh, to partners like Hireology to do that in our platform. You can go straight to Jet GPT to do it, but you can do that today. And while you can leverage public tools to do this, uh, you know, I think applicant tracking vendors on the forefront of this, uh, you know, I'll humbly submit that we are one of them, um, give you some built-in um, GPT or AI enabled functionality to start to do some of this yourself. So by integrating this functionality into the tool you're already using, uh, you keep your hiring process centralized and it just streamlines everything. Um, AI also has the potential to optimize the channels you use to distribute your job advertisement. So many reactive AI tools leverage data on the performance of job postings on various job boards uh, or on social media platforms or other digital channels in order to recommend where and how to advertise to reach top job seekers. So this saves on advertising costs uh, and also maximizes the exposure of your job listings, which improves the chances of finding the right candidate for your open roles. So this type of AI works best if it's integrated into your recruitment platform, allowing you to execute and analyze and optimize your recruiting strategy all from one place. So as AI becomes more accessible and commonplace in the recruiting space, uh, you're gonna see leading applicant tracking systems that, that can and will begin to incorporate this functionality. And that's really early days right now. Finally, uh, AI has the potential to help with real-time job ad optimization. Uh, it could monitor the performance of live job ads, tracking metrics like click-through rates or engagement or conversion rates. If an ad isn't performing, an AI co-pilot could suggest immediate adjustments to increase its effectiveness. Now, this approach would allow you to revise your job advertisements on the fly, ensuring that your recruitment efforts are always aligned with candidate expectations as they evolve in real time. The next area that's ripe for innovation is the process of identifying quality applicants. So currently the process is riddled with bias and requires really tedious back and forth with your team that slows everything down. But both the reactive and limited memory AI tooling can be used to help you sift through high volumes of candidates quickly and at least stack rank or sort them into an order at which you go through them. So now you might be thinking that most recruitment tools already do this by surfacing resumes with certain keywords. That's true. But this is just the beginning of what AI can do here, because ultimately finding people who are the right fit for a role in, in the hotel and hospitality industry is so much more than just who can put keywords on a resume. It's about reviewing the entirety of the work and life experience holistically and, and surfacing applicants to the top with the highest potential. Importantly, it, it's not making decisions about who qualified. That's where you get into that legal and regulatory gray area. It's all about optimizing the order in which you look much the same way as keyword matching technology does the same thing. This is just a thousand times more effective uh, and efficient. One thing you can do today 
is leverage uh, generative AI tools to summarize resumes in a few sentences. So this helps you look uh, beyond just certain keywords and grasp who the individual is uh, as a whole and better understand their entire career journey. So instead of taking six seconds to scan a resume, you're reading a review that AI has presented uh, that has taken into account perhaps their LinkedIn uh, or Indeed profile, the resume, the job application, um, and giving it to you in a really clear, easy to read format. So uh, it saves you time, yes. Um, it writes a summary for you. You can you know, uh, include that on your recommendation to a hiring manager, that's great. Uh, and then you can then prompt the tool to identify whether or not a candidate may be a match based on the input job description. So in the example on the screen here, you know, you can literally copy and paste a resume into chat GPT uh, and ask it to summarize the resume in four sentences or 10 sentences or one sentence. It will give you a response similar uh, to what you're seeing on the screen here. But let's take this even further. So as we noted above, um, identifying someone who is the right fit for a role, especially these guest facing roles, uh, at resorts uh, or luxury properties is so much more than checking boxes on paper. So you might consider the candidate's responsiveness, enthusiasm, and, and, and politeness in email correspondence or, or as contributing factors to a decision. But currently, the best way to gauge this is by gut feeling. But in the future, AI will analyze candidate communication uh, over time and identify candidates who show the most potential based on tone and language use. So for example, you should say, you know, you could say things like uh, ask questions or prompts of, of all the applicants for this job, which one has the most grammatically correct uh, email correspondence, if that's something, for example, you might want to look at. And finally, uh, AI can be trained on your own candidate database. And this is where I get really excited for our customers. It can be trained on your own candidate database and your own historical hiring and performance data to help you identify people you already have in your universe who may be a good fit for the roles you're trying to fill. So let's say you're looking for a front desk manager. In an ideal world, AI will identify patterns of candidates you've hired for in this role in the past beyond basic qualifiers like years of experience or keyword matching, and then surface individuals who are previous applicants or candidates uh, for similar roles, or even prior employees you still have in the database who are marked eligible for rehire. So for example, the algorithm might learn the most successful front desk workers have either had retail or food service roles in the past. Uh, the tool could then recommend contacts in your own database of applicants uh, who you may have overlooked. They could even recommend existing employees who may make a good fit for an internal move within the organization. But surfacing these uh, opportunities and recommending contacts within your database is really just the start. AI models, uh, can send automated campaigns to different slices of that market within your contact list, urging them to apply to a specific open role based on what it's learned about the role in previous successful candidates. So imagine a world where uh, in your ATS, you open up a role, you've got the job description, uh, AI is helping you post it in the right place, use the right language and manage that campaign. It's automatically surfacing and responding to applicants who look like the best fit. It's reaching into your applicant database and creating a campaign to invite those who look like a good fit to apply to the role. And it's doing all that, uh, giving you a lot of time back to be more strategic uh, and do the things you need to do day to day to really drive performance in the business. So uh, it's pretty exciting stuff, quite frankly. Um, interviewing is another aspect of the hiring process. Uh, that's in need of a real overhaul due to how often it's impacted by human bias, which is 100% of the time. So on top of that, good interview processes typically rely too heavily on manual work. So from scheduling interviews to determining interview questionnaires to gathering feedback across the team, AI can play a role in simply speeding up the process. So let's dig into some specific examples. So one thing you can do right now using generative AI is standardize your interview process by ensuring all candidates are evaluated against the same criteria and questions. Tools like ChatGPT can provide the best questions to ask candidates for specific roles based on data around the characteristics of people who typically perform best in these roles. In theory, in theory, 
AI could also provide you with a map of follow-up questions based on the candidate's answers, helping you dive even deeper into specific aspects of a candidate's background. AI could be taken one step further by helping you analyze responses to answers and compare those to responses across publicly available data, instantly surfacing the top responses across everyone interviewed for the role. So similar to what was noted above, AI models can detect patterns and responses that typically indicate a good fit faster and more accurately than humans can. Additionally, AI could gather notes and ratings from all of the interviewers who meet with the candidate through the process, summarize their feedback, and compare it across candidates to suggest top choices. So in these cases, AI is helping you gather the right information from candidates, it's helping you identify who is most likely to be a fit for a role based on their answers, and it's helping you eliminate human bias. And of course, ultimately, the final decision should always be made by a human, but the power of AI lies in helping you make the most informed decision possible a whole lot faster. AI in the interviewing process can also be used to streamline the scheduling of the interviews themselves, which takes up the bulk of the time in the administration of interviews. AI powering applicant tracking systems allow you to sync HR and hiring team calendars with your candidate communication tool, which can then automatically share open interview time slots with candidates, for example. So this is a great way to take manual work off of your plate or off the plate of your HR team and create better experience for the candidate and simply move faster in the interviewing process. But many tools like Hireology are offering this type of automation today, making manual interview scheduling a thing of the past and you know one step better than a Calendly invite. Uh, you know, that is really the standard today in automation. We're about to take a huge leap forward. So speed is critical when it comes to hiring in our industry today. In fact, uh, the applicant survey I mentioned earlier found that 67% of hospitality workers accept the first job interview, uh, sorry, the first job offer they received in their most recent search. But too often, these cumbersome processes I've referenced and human limitations slow hiring teams down, which lead to lost hires who end up taking roles of competitors because we just came in second or third in order uh, of delivering a job offer. Your team can spend hours, if not days, crafting emails and reading responses from people, or maybe the complex process of checking references slows you down, or perhaps it's just human error and poor time management that leads to a lengthy hiring process. Or we're just busy and hiring is the last thing on a 50 item list that we've got to get done every day. Whatever it is, AI has the potential to automate these manual tasks, recommend next steps and keep your recruiting process moving really quickly, which ultimately leads to hiring success. In a very basic sense, AI can help you streamline routine responses to applicants or candidates. But many tools today allow you to select uh, email and text templates and automatically send those messages based on a predetermined trigger. This is most commonly used in automatic thank you messages to new applicants or uh, you know, thank you for applying or candidate rejection emails, thanking them for interviewing. However, national, uh, natural language processing AI tools have the potential to take this even further. So outside of routine messaging, you could leverage AI to analyze more complex messages from talent and recommend responses, saving your team the time it takes to craft those responses from scratch. Additionally, it might help you draft more engaging messages to keep candidates interested and reduce the occurrence of interview no-shows. AI could eventually run this process autonomously via chatbots. I mean, in theory, an effective uh, NLP, a national language processing model, could manage the intake of new applicants, could automate all communication with candidates you've selected, could gather all documentation, schedule the interviews, and provide you with the interview questions. And all you have to do is show up. The best part is that candidates are likely to feel comfortable recruiting with chatbots in the hiring process. So people are used to dealing with bots and online communication, and these LLMs are so good, uh, it really doesn't make a difference to the individual uh, it doesn't show up as human versus machine. Uh, it just shows up as a great experience. And so the question here is, do we want to offer the best experience or are we you know, mandating uh, human only interaction? Um, that's really the question. And so, you know, from the concierge desk to booking rooms 
um, customer service, scheduling, uh, you know, outings or events, all of these things within your hotel are all ripe for change. Um, you know, why not apply this to job search as well? So Hireology does this today by leveraging a chat bot to manage employee referral submission intake, for example. Um, many of today's important hiring steps, as we've discussed, are, are very manual. All of the things, interview scheduling, sifting through applicants, ordering background checks, AI can learn to manage many of these tasks for you, removing risks of error and completing them in real time. For example, once a candidate reaches a certain stage in your hiring journey, AI could then automate the process of speaking with them and ordering a background check. Or AI could be used to instantly reach out to candidates to complete missing information for, from their applications. And you see this in a screenshot here, sometimes coming through job boards or other local sites or very you know, the social media applications, for example, uh, you'll get a name and an email, but you won't get information you want or need uh, or that's required to move forward. Um, you can automate all of this. You can automate highly manual but critical steps like these to ensure that the hiring process moves forward in a timely manner and it just isn't uh, held back or slowed down by limited HR staffing. H, uh, AI can also be used to manage workflows and define next steps, ultimately facilitating <laughs> excuse me, a much faster hiring process. So for example, uh, an AI recommendation engine could learn the ideal time it should take to complete steps within your ATS and suggest next steps for candidates in your system. So if you haven't responded to a candidate after an interview within X amount of time, AI recommends an email or text copy and prompts you to reach out. Or it could be used to eliminate the time spent tracking people down across your organization uh, to get feedback. So for example, you could use AI to automate the approval process for posting new jobs or to remind managers to look at candidates or accept that interview or alert hiring managers to input feedback from an interaction that they had like an interview. And of course, we can't discuss AI without discussing concerns about how it could actually make uh, racial and ethnic biases better or worse. Um, recruiting in HR is a highly personal and human process that is really complex, where the right answers and decisions are almost never clear cut. It's, it's natural to have some concerns and reservations about adding, uh, adding AI to the mix, and two major concerns really stand out. First is decision-making quality. So while AI has the potential to complete tasks in a human-like manner, it will always lack the intuition and nuanced perspective that human beings bring to the table. So AI tools only know the historical information you've provided, but human beings can contextualize a person's potential beyond simple data points. So without a human touch, you can't guarantee that the best decision will be made for the unique needs of your team. Many times, especially in our business, the best candidate isn't always the one with the best resume. And so concerns around biases and discrimination are also critical to consider. AI-driven hiring processes depend on the quality of the data used to train the algorithms. Biases present in that historical data could be made worse by AI, which leads to unintentional discriminatory outcomes. So to ensure fairness and transparency, uh, a level of human involvement is and always will be essential. So while you can conduct data audits, and work to improve the algorithms, it can, it, I, I'm just never gonna advise, and I'm sure your general counsel will never advise you to leave any final decisions around hiring up to AI models entirely. So simply put, AI should be used to empower your team to work smarter, but not to automate hiring decisions. Full stop. So while some of the examples I discussed today uh, are possible to do now, many are future state concepts. So what can you do to set yourself up to be able to quickly embrace these types of tools as they begin to appear on the market? Well, in addition to experimenting with the AI powered tools that are broadly available today, it's critical your technology and your data is equipped to handle the tooling as it continues to evolve and emerge. So number one, experiment with your public AI models like ChatGPT. So as mentioned throughout our talk, Tools like ChatGPT are a public resource. In fact, I would go so far as today to call them a public utility. They certainly function like that. Uh, you can and should be experimenting with ways to leverage these types of platforms to work better. Uh, 
Uh, why not use it to draft candidate emails that you can then revise and reuse? Uh, or experiment with prompting it to write your job descriptions or review the ones you already have. It'll take time to pinpoint the right language to use in your prompt, but over time you'll be able to understand exactly how to get the output that works for your team's needs. Second, leverage forward-thinking recruitment software, uh, you know, subtle plug for, for things that we do. Many ATSs and recruitment software providers are beginning to integrate AI into their platforms. So you wanna look for platforms that embrace artificial intelligence to help you better uh, bring solutions to market, as well as to provide efficiency for your team. So platforms that have already embraced AI and these capabilities and capacities are more likely to be developing this stuff down the line. Um, third, revisit the quality of your data. Private AI is going to have an exponentially larger impact on recruitment than public uh, AI models. The only way to really maximize the quality of the output of your future private AI stack is to ensure that the data you have is uh, that it's trained on is complete and accurate. So that means each individual in your talent database must have a complete profile and every rejection interview or hire logged in the system uh, needs to have as much of that information logged as possible. So that way the algorithm can learn to accurately match talent with open roles over time. Said differently, the quality of your future AI strategy is only as good as the data you're shoving into your systems today. So you want to work with systems that help you scrub and clean that data because down the line, they will not be usable if they're incomplete. And then finally, you wanna remove these data silos that you have in your HR tech stack. Uh, in order to fully leverage the potential of private AI, and that's really where the payoff is, down the line, it's important that your data is centralized. So AI is only as smart as the data it processes. So if it's fragmented in living across multiple systems, it's difficult for these models to see the full picture. So this means you need to work with your providers today that are uh, that make up this tapestry of data source and integrate and avoid these siloed systems. These are the things you can be doing now that will pay off down the road. And that, uh, is all I have for you today. Uh, and to summarize, uh, number one, hiring is hard. It's a challenge in the hospitality space, bottom line. Uh, two, most applicants are open to the idea of employers using AI to level the playing field. So, so uh, don't be afraid of experimenting. And then three, there are a lot of things you could do right now without having to go off and implement all kinds of new technology. Uh, you can use free publicly available AI models to write better job descriptions, to conduct better interviews, to make smarter uh, sorting decisions, and to just overall work more effectively. So thanks for joining me. Uh, with that, Diana, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, good luck. Reach out anytime with questions and make a great day. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening in. If you have any questions for Adam, now is your chance to ask them. Um, also in chat, if you'd like more information on this session, you may do so by clicking the link that was shared. We'll just give a few more minutes to see if we have anything from our um, attendees. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Adam, for presenting. And thank you, everyone who attended today. I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.